This illustration deals with class one circuit classifications and power source requirements in accordance with the NEC 725.41 A and B. Now, uh, 725.41 A deals with the uh, unlimited power sources. In other words, we're talking about uh, unlimited power sources such as 120 volt, 208 volt, 240 volt, 480 volt. Uh, all the way up really to 600 volts is how they uh, was classified and used. And so in other words, we could have, you know, a, a magnetic starter set in accordance with NEC 430.72. And we could have a stop and start button uh, on the cover of your starter or have remote conductors run out to stop and start stations or pressure switches, flow switches, etc. The, the main thing, though, if we had, say, a uh, uh, 240 volt three-phase feeding a contactor, we could take 240 volt control, or we could have 120 volt control. If you had 480 volt control in those days, you could even take uh, 480 volt uh, control stop and start stations. So you had 277 volts to ground. 725.41b, as in boy now, deals with power limited circuits, and that section says a power class one limited circuit is a thousand volt amps or less, uh, and usually 30 volts or less so in those days. So we're giving our uh, classification of a power limited circuit and a non-power limited circuit. Now in the illustration, we're looking at 30 volts or less, at 1,000 volts or less. We have a three-phase power supply to a process motor, but we have a control transformer that's usually mounted in a combination starter with a stop and start button on the cover. And notice that the transformer is taking the, uh, uh, say, uh, 480 uh, volt coming into that uh, 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 contactor, if that be the case, a combination controller, and tapping off that and feeding the transformer and stepping that voltage down to a power limited circuit of uh, uh, 12 volts. Now, in the definitions, Article 100 of NFPA 70E, it kind of states that OSHA just gives us a Class 2 circuit without any requirements pertaining to shock hazards and fire hazards. But if you have a class two or class three circuit, that circuit must be evaluated to see if it is a shock hazard or a fire hazard. Uh, for example, uh, te televisions will have a very high voltage on that picture tube, but very low output, just in small milliamp. X-ray equipment, uh, I've worked on uh, X-ray equipment uh, in welding shops and different places, uh, even in healthcare facilities. And you may have 250,000 volts, but just with a small milliamp. It's a, it, it can be a shock hazard to you, but it's not an amp killing hazard to you. But it'll let you know that you got on to it uh, uh, accidentally. So we know that class uh, uh, three circuits and class one circuits uh, can be dangerous. Uh, class two uh, is a gimme circuit, so to speak, because it's not a shock or fire hazard. And 70 explains this in detail, but says you just can't automatically take a class one and three and say they're okay. You have to evaluate them to see if they're a shock hazard or a arc, uh, arc hazard. So uh, that transformer could be, uh, uh, you know, uh, mounted remotely in an enclosure, it could be directly in the enclosure. Now, uh, as I pointed out, if it's a uh, uh, non-power limited circuit and you have 460 volt coming into that uh, enclosure, then I could tap off of the L1, L2, or L3 lines and uh, use the voltage that supplies the contactor and table 430.72 regulates that installation where the conductors are installed inside the enclosure or they're 
uh, mounted remotely somewhere with a pressure switch, a, uh, uh, any kind of switch, flow switch, whatever it may be. But notice uh, this uh, low voltage may only uh, indicate uh, power to, uh, or provide power to an indicating light that uh, say was green when its uh, circuit's energized, red when it's not. How are we using it? Are we using it as control? Are we using it to power up indicating lights? Uh, what is this uh, circuit being used for? But notice it can be a class one power limited circuit as figure 4-14 indicates.